Ahmed Shahidapur is the Bodin Chair, Professor of, and Director of the Robert W. Galvin Center for Electricity Innovation at the Illinois Institute of Technology. He received an honorary doctorate in 2009 from the Polytechnic University of Bucharest in Romania. Dr. Shahidapur is sought after worldwide to advise on microgrid and smart microgrid technology solutions and has a successful track record of attaining over $50 million in federal grant funds for renewable energy research, development, and education, including $3 million for renewable energy work at the University of the Virgin Islands. Dr. Shahidapur is a research professor. Uh, anyway, a lot of great stuff. I'm going to abbreviate it there. He's qualified. Thank you very much, Senator Barsinger. Doctor, now pronounce your name and spell it on the record for my sonographer, please. You can pull the, the whole base towards you. You can pull the microphone out of the socket. Um, Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Speaking uh, to the microphone. First, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Senator Boschinger for inviting me to testify at this uh, gathering. Uh, my name is Mohammed Shahidapur. My last name is spelled as S-H-A-H-I-D-E-H-P-O-U-R. I'm a professor at Illinois Institute of Technology. I've been there almost 33 years as a professor. And much of the work that I do is related to energy efficiency, renewable energy, and microgrids. As uh, Senator pointed out, we were here last year. We signed uh, an agreement with the University of Virgin Island. And after that, we were able to raise $3 million for establishing a microgrid at the university here at, at the Virgin Island. And I'm here to talk and to testify, to point out that there is a crisis in the uh, island related to energy. Uh, you folks pay one of the highest rates for energy uh, in the entire nation. And there are other ways, there are better ways to generate and utilize electricity. And it is better to follow the pattern that is being already established in other parts of the United States, as well as the you know, global pattern, in order to lower the cost of generating electricity. It's costing you jobs. It's costing you businesses. It's costing you population. It is too much. So I'd like to talk about that, going through some of the questions that were raised, and I provided a response to those. One of the questions was modernizing the WAPA grid. Uh, let me wear my glasses. Mm -hmm. On a St. John will serve as a model renewable energy generation project for the territory. Uh, please describe, uh, briefly describe the services that Robert W. Galvin uh, Center for Energy Innovation can provide to Virgin Islands. By the way, I am the director of the Galvin Center in Chicago. Uh, as the Senator pointed out, we have over $50 million projects related to energy innovation. We have converted the entire 10 megawatt university operation to a microgrid. And uh, some of you have already visited us. I welcome the uh, rest of you to come and visit us and see what we have done. We have reduced our cost of energy by 25%. And uh, it is a trend that we are following. Now, the point is that we are in Chicago. This is the place that is not the best location for establishing renewable energy. Virgin Islands is a low-hanging fruit when it comes to establishing renewables and reducing the overall cost of providing energy. Um, we, uh, we are working with the city of Chicago and the Comet, which is a utility in Chicago area with over 25 gigawatts uh, of load to establish more microgrids in the Chicago area, in the metropolitan Chicago. So we are here to help. We are here to support the mission of establishing microgrids, renewable energy, energy efficiency goals in order to reduce the cost of supplying energy. The second question was, uh, Virgin Island presently has an antiquated energy generation system. What should we have and what should uh, the cost be? Basically, the point is that uh, it will cost more to operate a system that's outdated because it breaks down more. And then when the system is so antiquated, it is less efficient. The newer systems, the more modern systems are more efficient, so it costs less to operate them, and it costs less to manage it because it uh, breaks down less. High energy costs in the territory will likely continue. 
to lower the total energy consumption in the Virgin Islands as consumers either close their businesses or curtail their consumption level. Basically, there will be less job opportunities for the entire territory. To, uh, these people will do that in order to be able to afford monthly energy bills. The territory should further cons uh, consider a portfolio of new generation resources for mon modernizing its energy infrastructure. It would include uh, renewables in the form of wind, solar, geothermal, biofuels. It includes the newly designed and highly efficient thermal generation. It will include uh, different types of storage, either in the form of pump storage or distributed generation or batteries. And also it include the types of demand response. Uh, the point is that uh, with a strong uh, energy planning for the entire territory, supported by the local ut utility and the legislators, the territory will attract energy companies to use federal and private funds to invest in the territory uh, and its in uh, infrastructure. Basically, the point here is that if you open the door and allow investors to come in and invest a lot more in the territory, they will be able to bear the cost and uh, sign PPA, the per per Purchase Power Agreements, with the territory in order to sell power at a much cheaper rate uh, to this uh, territory and then supply power at the cheaper rate to consumers at the state. The other question was what federal programs are available to assist the territory in obtaining lower energy costs and higher reliability. There are a number of federal programs available. Uh, Department of Energy, uh, uh, Department of Defense, they all have come up with loan programs that will allow different states and territories to utilize available programs in order to uh, make long-term investments. But the point is that territory ne would need to work with the energy companies which are uh, experienced in getting those loans and building energy programs and, and inf energy infrastructure in order to lower the program. In my t testimony, I listed a number of programs, federal <coughs> programs that are available currently in order to uh, apply and lower the cost. The other question was that we have heard that Aruba is able to accept about 100% of the renewable energy. Question is, how would they do that and what's the mechanism? Uh, basically, Aruba is able to embark that uh, plan as far as being able to accept 100% of its renewable energy by putting together a portfolio that would include wind, energy, biofuel, uh, energy uh, storage, demand response, all the other issues that I raised earlier in order to do that. All those options are available to U.S. Virgin Island to basically implement the same idea. The other issue was uh, discuss any legislation needed to modernize the territory's electric grid. I pointed out that uh, regulatory barriers here in the Virgin Island could ward off large investors and hurt local businesses in this territory. Forward-looking legislators should work closely with WAPA and other local decision makers to establish as their mission a major paradigm sh shift in the territory in order to supply lower cost energy to businesses and to residents of the state. This paradigm shift would have to be started by erecting a small microgrid test bed in St. John, which has less than 10 megawatt load, so it's easily possible to do that, and demonstrating the potential benefits of modernizing the, the entire energy delivery in the Virgin Islands to residents and the pot also to the potential investors. A modern and cheaper energy supply system will attract more businesses and manufacturing jobs to the entire Virgin Islands. Um, and uh, for the record, it is already happening in other parts of the United States where they have lowered the cost of energy and they, they have witnessed that it's attracting more businesses. Conversely, an antiquated and very expensive electricity supply system, that's what you have here in the Virgin Islands, will encourage businesses and retail energy consumers to relocate out of the territory. And again, that's what you're witnessing here. There will be, there's no question that there will be typical concern for any major changes to the current hierarchy in the U.S. Virgin Island energy sector that is expected. 
uh, it is uh, these discussions and concerns are often legitimized by uh, legitimized falsely rather by issues such as shrinking manpower and employment opportunities in the uh, utility industry. Uh, however, the record has shown, experience in other parts of the United States have shown that lowering the energy costs bring more businesses and it will enhance the, the, the utility jobs. One thing that I'd like to point out is that the same argument was made when the telecommunication industry went through restructuring business. When people started buying cell phones and mobile phones, AT&T at the time made an argument that investing in a wireless system is basically duplicating the system that we have. It's a waste of money that's not going to help telecommunication system. And you all have witnessed what happened when the United States invested in the wireless system. It basically took over, created more jobs, pushed the energy innovation in the United States, made the country to be the leader in the te telecommunication system. I think you, knew, you need to do the same thing here by revisiting the way that you're generating and delivering electricity. Uh, the, the entire uh, territory does have a number of options available for lowering energy. It's just a matter of modifying the barriers that already exist in the entire territory for allowing investors to come in and do a credible uh, build-off of the energy infrastructure and build and sell energy at a cheaper rate to consumers. It's just you are the ones who have to make those changes, otherwise this business is not going anywhere. What is happening right now in the entire territory is a Band-Aid operation. What you're doing of fixing the small portion of the system is not going to last for a long time. You, uh, as decision makers within the territory, would have to come up with a decision that would, in the long term, serve the residents, bring more businesses into this location in this territory, bring more manufacturing jobs, and stop this transition of people moving out of the state. Uh, what we envision is that uh, time that the U.S. Uh, Virgin Island Register uh, work with the local industry, with energy investors, energy planners, local residents to embark on modernizing the energy delivery system, create better days and many more manufacturing jobs in this very wonderful territory. I'm done. Thank you very much.